What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Out channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming in at number 34, we have the daughter of the Tiger of Jiangdong, the original female character of the Wu Kingdom, Sun Shang Zhang. Sun Shang Zhang is one of Sun Jian's daughters and the younger sister of Sun Se and Sun Quan. She is historically one of Liu Bei's wives who bore him no children, and during their marriage she was known to have practiced martial arts and had armed maids near her company at all times. Before we jump into how Sun Shang Zhang has changed over the past 20 years from her original original playable debut back in the first Dynasty Warriors game. Take a look at the popularity poll to see why she's up here at number 34. In the first popularity poll, Sun Shang Zhang receives 1,214 votes out of a total of over 75,000 votes, putting her at the 22nd spot. In the second popularity poll, she's going to drop down to the 40th position, and then in my personal ranking, she's going to drop down to the 50th spot. So for me personally, Sun Shang Zhang is the lowest among the three polls because she was an okay character. I've been aware of her for a very long time. And being an original character from the original Dynasty Warriors game, of course I'm going to know who she is. But I never really played through her or was eager to play through her. I was aware of her weapon style. I was aware of you know the character she was and you know what she represented within the game. But she was never a character that I personally wanted to play or that really intrigued me to want to play her. But I can understand her appeal for being one of the first female characters of the Dynasty Warriors series. Before we dive deep into how she's changed since her playable debut back in the first game, let's, let's talk about Sun Shang Zhang for people who don't know. So like I said, Sun Shang Zhang was a Chinese noble woman who lived during the late Eastern Han Dynasty. She was the daughter of the warlord Sun Jian and Lady Wu, and her older brothers were the warlords Sun Se and Sun Quan. Later on, she would go to marry Liu Bei to strengthen an alliance between Liu Bei and Sun Quan. While they were not close in history, Romance of the Three Kingdoms insists that they are happily wedded to each other. Sun Shang Zhang is an upbeat and independent woman who is considered to be a tomboy. She is loving and loyal to her family, slightly respecting her brothers Sun Se over Sun Quan. She's always eager to lend a helping hand, and she frequently wants to show her worth in battle, which usually worries her father and brothers. However, they're proud that she shares her family's dignity and enthusiasm and she's usually addressed as princess by all the other Wu officers only being called by her name by her family and Liu Bei. So like I said personally for me Sun Chang Zhang is a little bit lower on the list because again I have to respect her as one of the original female characters but for me I just personally was never drawn to the character herself. Uh, I was aware of the weapon that she used, the chakrams, the wind and fire wheels. I am aware of the weapon that she used but it was never a weapon that I was intrigued to play or like super interested in playing and uh, for me she was just an okay character she was a pivotal character for the Wu kingdom in terms of being a female character and playing that role i do really like her relationships within the kingdom and of course with liu bei and how all that transcends and you know builds the story really nice and everything the most impressive quality to me about the character is her appearance and i guess it's a great segue into talking about how she's changed since being one of the original characters of the dynasty warrior series so for me we're going to start off with her appearance because for me this is the best part of the character i believe her appearance i really really like her appearance within the games from like dynasty warriors 4 and on of course the earlier games it's not as high definition is not as good looking but um, from Dynasty Wars 4 and on, I really like the way Sun Shang Zhang looks. It's a really good look for her. And I would say my favorite is probably in Dynasty Warriors 7 or 8. Those are probably my favorite ones. But I've always liked her appearance. I thought she'd always look really cool for who Sun Shang Zhang is. Um, but that's pretty much how far I would go for the character in terms of liking her. I don't have anything against her weapon style or the character itself. The only draw for the character for me is her appearance. I really like the way she looks. Um, really cool to see like a mix of like armor and like the light clothing that she wears, little dresses or whatever, along with her, you know, fighting style, whatever it is. So for me, personally, her appearance is the best part of the character. Now moving on to her weapon style, like I've already mentioned, she has the wind and fire wheels, she has the chakrams for pretty much all the games except for Dynasty Warriors 6 and of course the first game. But in Dynasty Warriors 6 she gets the bow and she's actually nicknamed the Bow Wasted Princess, so... It kind of fits that she has a bow and I believe it's because she had she would like carry a bow on her waist or she would always have a bow on her so giving her the bow seemed okay. Honestly in Dynasty War 6 the bow was actually for her was actually pretty fun. I had a lot of fun with it. It was actually pretty fun to use and uh, you can just kind of sit back and just you know mow down enemies with a bow. I you know I had a lot of fun with it. It was pretty cool to use and uh, her main weapon the wind and fire wheels the chakrams they're an okay weapon. I can't complain too much about it. They're not uh, the best weapon. They're not the you know most exciting weapon for me personally but I do enjoy them. I did have a you know good time with them. I think the Musao attacks in the earlier games were pretty nice and then leading on into the later games her aerial attack in all the newer games is like her best Musao attack. It's really cool. She like jumps in the air pulls out a bow and like 
like puts her foot on it, you know, pulls it back, throws it. I mean, that's really cool. That's probably my favorite Musao attack. But the wind and chak, you know, the chakra itself, the the hoop rings, the hoop blades, you know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're not my cup of tea, but I can understand the appeal for them. You know, it's a very unique weapon. And if you play this game long enough, if you see that weapon, you associate it with Soon Shang Zhang. Now moving on to her voice acting. Her voice acting is pretty good. I would say overall it's good. Uh, her voice acting in the earlier games is pretty decent. I think it fits her well as the character she's trying to portray. And I am loyal to my father, my brother, and to Wu. And then in Dynasty Warriors 6, I would say that this is probably the worst out of her voice acting. I don't like where they went with the voice acting for her. They went from like that you know, tomboy, serious, not like super serious, but like almost commanding presence to like a childish kind of like little girl type vibe with the voice in Dynasty Warriors 6. I'm so proud of you, father. You made him pay that nasty loo loo. Wasn't a big fan of that. I didn't really like how they portrayed that. I think Sun Chen Zhang is a pretty strong person and she's a, you know, at least within the game, she's a reputed warrior. Like she's, you know, she's a strong person. Like, and she, I don't think that voice really fit her. Dynasty Warriors 7, 8, and 9, they go back to more of, of a more adequate voice style for her. I won't let you kill him. Not even by your hand, brother. That warrior, respected martial artist type of person. Not saying a martial artist can't sound like that, but they it sounds like they went more childish. More like, you know, very young, inexperienced, you know, not like the warrior tomboy that Soon Chang Zhang is known for, at least to me personally. But overall, her voice acting is good. I can't complain about it too much. And now wrapping it up with her relationships, her significant battles, and her death. So she doesn't really have any significant battles. Uh, there's no battle where she plays like a significant role in it. Uh, so we're gonna just skip over that. And then her death isn't really mentioned at all. There's no historical information on her. Like after she goes back to the Wu Kingdom, there's like no more data on what happens to her after that. The games obviously expand it in different ways. You know, some games she's you know on the Wu side killing Liu Bei. Sometimes she's on Liu Bei side, you know, killing the Wu side. But her death is not really known. Don't really know what happens to her. She maybe dies of illness or something. I, we don't know. But, but moving on to her relationship, she has a lot of relationships within the kingdom. And then of course she's going to have the relationship with her husband, Liu Bei, outside the kingdom. Let's start off with inside the kingdom. So she's gonna have a relationship with all of her family. So Sun Jian, Sun Se, Sun Quan, and she's gonna have a relationship with Lian Shi, who's her personal bodyguard. Those are probably the main relationships she has within the kingdom. And then I would say she would have minor relationships with Cheng Pu, Huang Gai, Zhou Yu, and that's pretty much it for the Wu Kingdom. So we're gonna talk about the main relationships. The minor relationships she has like minor cutscenes with them, where she has like minor interactions, like. The like Cheng Pu, Huang Gai are all older veterans of the team and they were enlisted when Sun Jian first built his forces. So they kind of look at her like a daughter as well or like a niece or a, you know a young child. So they have that like mentor, father, you know uncle type vibe with her like that kind of relationship. And then with Zhou Yu I think she has another minor relationship with uh, just because Zhou Yu is so close to Sun Se and then Sun Cheng Zhang is really close to Sun Se so they they have that indirect close relationship as well. Not super close but it's definitely there and they definitely have the ability to talk and interact with each other and everything like that. But but the main relationship she's gonna have is with her family. So Sun Jian, Sun Se, and Sun Quan. They all have a very close bond being, you know, tigers of the Wu Kingdom, tigers of Jiangdong. They take immense pride in being who they are, being members of the Sun family. And she has a very, very close relationship with all three of them up until, you know, her father's death and then Sun Se's death. And then she does everything she can, I believe in most of the games to help Sun Quan realize his dreams as well. Very, very close relationship with her family. The games make it super evident that it's very important to her to have that close relationship with them. And uh, she does everything she can in her power to make their dreams come true. She, she highly respects her father and both her brothers for what they do and what they have to go through as leaders of the Wu Kingdom. And then her relationship with Leon Shur, it's her personal bodyguard. Of course, they're gonna know each other pretty well. It's actually said that Sun Shang Zhang had, I believe, over a hundred like women in armor and swords that were always like following her around or like keeping her safe. And uh, Leon Shur, I guess, was one of the main ones because she ended up being one of the wives of Sun Quan, a very important wife to Sun Quan. So she became a playable character. She's very close to Sun Shang Zhang. And you can see that relationship that they have ever since her introduction into the game. Um, they have a few cutscenes together, and of course they're gonna have that bond because Leon Shur is there to protect Sun Shang Zhang. And then Sun Shang Zhang 
notices that Sun Quan is following for Lian Shi, and then Lian Shi ends up becoming Sun Quan's bodyguard, and they, you know, have a relationship and everything like that. But and then of course her main relationship, one of the main relationships in the game, she's obviously going to have a big relationship with Liu Bei. Liu Bei is the leader of the Shu Kingdom. And like I said before, in order to strengthen the alliance between Liu Bei and Sun Quan after the battle of Qi Bi, uh, Zhou Yu actually recommends Sun Shang Zhang to get married to Liu Bei in order to strengthen that alliance between the two. Her marriage to Liu Bei does not become a pivotal focus in the Dynasty Warriors franchise until the fifth title though. So before that, she's just a normal playable character you play through and she doesn't really have that much interactions with Liu Bei. From Dynasty Warriors 5 and on, that's when they really start to push. That's when it starts to become like a main point of the Dynasty Warriors series. And uh, depending on which game you're playing will determine what you're doing with Sun Chang Zhang. So in Dynasty Warriors 5, I believe her ending, she ends up killing Liu Bei because she stays on Wu's side. And in Dynasty Warriors 6, she goes to Liu Bei's side. Um, she doesn't kill Sun Quan, but she beats them. And then she goes back to help Sun Quan and to defeat the Wei Kingdom. So it just depends on which game you're playing. So in the majority of the games that they start to focus on this wedding, uh, Sun Chang Zhang actually expresses that she likes Liu Bei and the relationship that they have, the marriage that they have within the games, is of a happy and really positive one. But some of the historical texts would say otherwise. Apparently Sun Chang Zhang not only acted in an arrogant, unbridled manner, but also allowed her bodyguards and personal staff to behave lawlessly in Jing province where she was currently staying at with Liu Bei. And then when Liu Bei left Jing province, Sun Chang Zhang apparently attempted to take Liu Shan, so Liu Bei's son, back to Wu territory. And uh, she was stopped by Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei before she could make it there. Don't know if that's true or not. That's just what I've read. It's very interesting to see the contrasting differences in the historical information and, of course, with the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, what the Dynasty Warriors series portrays her as. But but within the series itself, they have a very good relationship with each other. And all the way up until Liu Bei's death, she's very supportive. She's there when, you know, Liu Bei's not too sure of himself or when he's, like, down or he doesn't think he's strong enough. And But she always says something along the lines of how kind he is and that that's really his true saving grace. And that's what people, you know, follow him for. That's his true strength. And that should be enough to continue pushing on whatever path he needs to get through in order to make his dreams become a reality. But that's all I really have for Sun Shang Zhang here. Uh, not much else for the character that I have. I mean, again, her death wasn't really noted, and she didn't really participate in any big battles or anything, so... But she is one of the original characters from the Dynasty Warriors series, from Dynasty Warriors 1, so that's pretty interesting to know. But anyway, guys, that's all I have for Sun Shang Zhang here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely appreciate it, like, comment, subscribe. If I missed anything about the character, or is there anything extra that I didn't know about, let me know down below, and I'll check it out. But that's all I have, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.